Um, well, thanks everybody. My name is Dr. Nettles. We're going to be doing this presentation tonight. We're going to be talking about the difference in direct versus indirect antioxidants. And this is the presentation you're going to hear. It's called The War Within Our Cells, Antioxidants versus Free Radicals. Now, most people are going to get somewhat of a paradigm change tonight because of the, the previous understanding that we've had of free radicals is what we now have subclassified as direct antioxidants. So we're going to go into that. First, I'm going to give this disclaimer here. The information provided in this presentation is intended for your general knowledge only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice or treatment for specific medical conditions. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. This information is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Never disregard medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you may see or hear in this presentation. So let's talk about some statistics. In the United States, the current population is 306,984,000 and change. That's how many people live here in America. Well, let's put some statistics in, in place here. Fact, according to the American Heart Association, there are 80,700,000 people in the United States, which is actually almost one in three, that's a typo, um, with cardiovascular disease. Heart disease is the number one killer of Americans. And in, in 2008, there was 200, or, excuse me, 869,724 deaths from heart disease alone in this country alone. And the second fact there, according to the American Cancer Society, there were 2.5 million new cases of cancer in the United States in just 2008, including 1 million cases plus of skin cancer. And of those people, 565,650 Americans died of cancer in 2008. A year later, in 2009, my father joined that. He was diagnosed, and 13 years later, 13 months later, rather, we were at his funeral. From first symptom to funeral was 13 months. So cancer is something that has really taken on a whole new meaning in my life. But let's look at some one of the unfortunate truths about these two facts, is that most of the people who died in those reference statistics were on prescription medication at the time of their death. So medicine is not the answer. We have these people that are dying, and they're medicated and dying. So we have to look at something different. Well, what do these diseases, specifically cancer and heart disease, what do they have in common? The answer is the aging process. These are, these are diseases that are typically of the agent, and they're accelerated by oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is the term used for free radical damage, excessive free radical damage. So why do we age? The prevailing theory now on the aging process is this free radical equation. Scientists agree that aging and most deadly diseases are the direct result of cellular deterioration due to destructive molecules called free radicals. Free radicals, they damage and it increases predictably as you go or as you age and it causes a condition known as oxidative stress. Again, advanced free radical damage is termed oxidative stress and it leads directly to over 200 diseases including diabetes, heart disease, cancer, depression, Alzheimer's, etc. That's a very small list. This is very large issue here. So what can we do about this oxidative stress condition? What can we do to decrease it? The prevailing thought process out there, if you will, is antioxidants. Antioxidants are the solution, at least that what we have been taught. Question is, is what variety are we talking about? We just until recently did not know that there is a direct antioxidant and there's an indirect antioxidant. So supplements, which are direct antioxidants, and I'll get into that in here in a second. Antioxidant supplements and antioxidant-rich foods are everywhere, and they're promoted heavily. When I say everywhere, they're literally, I would challenge you to walk through any shelf in your grocery store and look for something that contains antioxidants. They're everywhere. They're promoted very heavily. But they're also promoted very ridiculously, in my opinion. Looking at Diet Coke with antioxidants. Wow or Diet Cherry 7-Up with antioxidants, or green tea flavored Coca-Cola. These things are not health foods, and if you add antioxidants to them, it does not change that. And in fact, the pH level of these, I would, I would say in my opinion, would render these antioxidants useless anyway. So, but do they make a difference? Do antioxidants, in fact, make a difference in the free radical equation? The answer is yes, it, they do. But we have to understand how and where they work. So in order to answer the question, we really need to understand how these, how they work and where their benefits are actually experienced. That would just be a question we would need to know. But we now know that free radicals are produced in the cell. And one of the things you can't see with the color here is that the, this 
free radicals that are that therefore are needed in the cell. Antioxidants are needed in the cell because free radicals are actually affected in the cell. We need to get those antioxidants in there. But when we consume these antioxidants, these direct antioxidants, they're mostly present in the bloodstream and not within the cell. So we have to look for a different solution. We now know that antioxidants, like I said, they do in fact neutralize free radicals, but there's two types now. We understand there's a direct variety which come from your fruits, your juices, and vitamins, etc. But there's also an indirect variety. They're antioxidant catalysts, the enzymes that are made by your cells. These indirect antioxidants uh, enzymes are produced in your cells as a, as a consequence, or as a solution rather, to the free radical damage or the oxidative stress load of the person. And enzymes such as SOD or superoxide dismutase, catalase, glutathione, and many, many others. So when our bodies don't eliminate these, these antioxidants, these free radicals, um, within the cell, we need to actually have the equation that is going to work. So direct antioxidants work within the cell. I'm going to use this. So in the presence of catalase, which is a direct or an indirect antioxidant produced by your cells, within the environment of your cells, when you have some hydrogen peroxide in the presence of catalase, it neutralizes it into water and oxygen. It actually neutralizes these free radicals within the cell by this enzyme that your body makes. We now know also that enzymes offer pure antioxidant protection as a balanced network. They do not produce oxidants. It's very important to make that distinction because things like vitamin C and vitamin E are actually creating free radicals. They are pro-oxidants. When we thought before they were antioxidants, but we now have in vivo studies, and I'm going to share a couple of them with you here, that show that these are actually pro-oxidants, not antioxidants. However, in green it appears it's not showing up in this. Um, one molecule of catalase can neutralize up to one million free radicals per second every second, and it's, it's actually in green, so you can't see that. Sorry about that. So what really works? We ha how do these direct antioxidant and indirect antioxidant approaches, how do they match up to one another? Well, it's on how they work, the ratio and how they work. Direct antioxidants, like your juices, your fruits and vitamins, etc., they work on a one-to-one -one ratio, which means when you take these into your body, and your body metabolizes them and breaks them down, one molecule of, say, a vitamin E will, in fact, neutralize one free radical. But you need now another one. So you need to keep consuming these things. The question is, is that does it work? Yes, in fact, it does work. It works very well on a one-to-one -one ratio. But when we're talking about indirect antioxidants, those enzymes that are made within your body, they work on a one-to-one -one million ratio, where one molecule of an antioxidant enzyme produced by your body will in fact neutralize one million free radicals per second, every second, the same enzyme, because it's a catalyst. It's not consumed as it is in the direct antioxidant approach. So how many free radicals are we talking about? We have, to, we have to know that before we realize which one of these benefits is superior to the other. Well, the answer to how many free radicals our bodies produce in just one 24-hour period is staggering. It's 300 sextillion free radicals produced in one 24-hour period by one healthy individual. This is not someone who's diseased. This is not an ill person. This is a healthy person. And it's 300 sextillion, which is the number three, followed by 23 zeros. So now, let's evaluate those approaches. The direct antioxidant approach is a one-to-one -one ratio. The indirect is a one-to-one -one million ratio. Let me go back. Again, the green doesn't show up. So when something is working on a one-to-one -one ratio, the direct antioxidants, let's talk about that. This is analogous to, say, a forest fire. That 300 sextillion free radicals is like the forest fire, or a raging forest fire. And we know that water does, in fact, extinguish fire. There's no debate. There's no question. But if we have a cup full of water thrown onto a raging forest fire, it's not going to have any effect, though water does, in fact, extinguish fire. That's what would happen if you're using the direct approach, one to one million, or one to one, rather, it's not effective. Whereas the indirect approach, the one to one million, is like pouring that same cup of water on a single birthday candle. It's very effective, and it does, in fact, neutralize it, though it has been shown now in peer-reviewed studies by at least 40%, up to 70%, and 100% of people participating in taking ProTandem after just 30 days, this indirect approach.